Hey. Good evening. Welcome back to the Down the Rabbit Hole podcast, episode 12. My name is Lo, representing the Bay Area of Northern California. This is the official Movie Matrix podcast over on the East Coast. We got Senior Bat Nipples extraordinaire. How are you doing, Ryan? Yo, what is going on, guys? I hope you're having a fantastic week and a fantastic Sunday night as we start off the new week worth of news. And we've got some pretty big stuff with us today. If you guys are new to the show, I don't know if you guys know this, but I might be madly in love with Anna Taylor Joy. That might be like my new wife, especially after seeing her in the new mutants recently. I've just got an absolute diehard crush on this girl. And that's all I need to say. But she joins Robert Edgar's new film, uh, The Northman, right? The Northman? I believe, yeah, yeah The right. Northman. And if you guys don't know, this is not their first time working together. This is their second time working together. They worked on The Witch for Robert Edgar's first film today uh, together. Fuck, my bad. All my language is messed up today. Huge, busy week. But I've also got to say, this was also the first time I was introduced to Anna Taylor Joy. So I'm really happy to see them finally working together again. Because I might not have been the biggest fan of The Witch, and I loved The Lighthouse. I really can't wait to see what they've, they're they doing with this film. I don't know much about it, but from what I've been hearing, is it's going to be something unique and something that we've never seen before. But I feel like we can really get that from Robert Eggers. But what do you get out of this news, Lo? Um, first off, I was captivated by Anya Taylor-Joy's performance in Split. I've been a fan ever since. Um, she did eventually star in Glass. She was in this year's Emma, which was excellent. It was based on the Jane Austen novel that the cult classic Clueless was based off of. Um, I haven't seen Queen's Gambit yet, but she's just on a roll. She's just pumping out some hits and she's got some really good chops. She's charming. She's of course she's gorgeous. And I can't wait to see what uh, Robert Eggers has in store for us. I really like the witch. Um, I think, I think it's split between Ari Aster and Robert Eggers. You either love one or the other. Mm -hmm. I prefer the witch over the lighthouse and the same way that I prefer hereditary over Midsommar, you know, Aster and Eggers have like a split fan base on which film they prefer. But I think the consensus with horror fans and film fans is that Eggers and Aster are equally talented, you know, whether you like one film or the other. Um, I'm really excited what they bring. I thought The Witch was really intense, especially for a period piece that didn't have a lot of like special effects or a lot of like intense gore or anything. Um, the Witch was just atmospheric and just the same way that Aster does like so much little with so like he does so much with so less. And I think Eggers does the same thing. It's all about mood. It's all about tension and um, just atmosphere, you know? So I'm excited. Yeah. And um, with that being said. What's going on, Todd? Dude, space X-Launches are always badass, but we do know we're cooler. Space X-Launch? I must have missed the memo on that. By the way, Di uh, Rai, is there any way we could get that like, comment, and subscribe thing? Oh, yeah, you want me to back up? Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, wait, why did I? There we go. Got it. But yeah, man, I think so, I don't know what this next topic is. Yeah, you're gonna. Have to I got you. Me. So we just got some um, first look at Gunpowder Milk Milkshake, starring Michelle Yeoh, Angela Bassett, Karen Gillan, Lena Haiti, and Carla Gugino. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Sorry, Carla, you're wonderful. Um, this cast is excellent, and it looks like an action thriller. It looks like it's gonna. If if Michelle Michelle Yeoh returns to action. So, take my money like insert that gif of fry shut up and take my money um i'm a big michelle yo fan going back to crouching tiger hidden dragon um super cop which was police story three essentially but it was released in the u.s as super cop and most people remember michelle yo from crazy rich asians people that are younger but she is an action star so if she's good to go on back to kung fu oh also she was in tomorrow never dies that was pierce brosnan's second james bond film if you haven't seen that um, she's wonderful. And Angela Bassett, I haven't seen her in a while. I think she was last seen in Black Panther. No, nah, um, uh, Endgame. Technically, technically. Oh, you're right. No, you're right. Yeah, the whole family showed up for Endgame. Yeah, so that was awesome. Obviously, Karen <laughs> Gillan's amazing. I'm not a big Game of Thrones fan, but I know a lot of people like Lena Haiti. And I, I didn't know that she was Sarah Connor on the Terminator show. But just from the stills and from this cast, I am super excited. How about you, Ryan? Honestly, I don't know what to make of it, but is that okay? So the picture to the right, the little girl, is that the girl from My Spy? 
I think you're right. That I didn't even like recognize it. I haven't I seen thought. that film. So. I thought she was funny for like a first time actress. I really like all these women. Michelle uh, Yo is fantastic as usual. And I'm surprised Angela's Bassett is doing something that's non MCU between the MCU projects that she's probably going to be in with whether Black Panther 2, if they still do that or not. But she also does the 911 TV show for Fox, which is why you don't see her on um, in movies a lot too much. But without a doubt, we've got a really cool Marvel announcement yes, other we do. than WandaVision. Shocker, I know, but Moon Knight is set to start filming soon. Um, they Did they say when? I don't think they did, but they said relatively soon. I'm going to assume January. So early 2021. Early 2021. January to March for people – out there in the whatever verse you're in right now. So we should be expecting this to start filming sometime between January and March next year. Um, I'm excited for this. I'm shocked they got Oscar Isaac. I don't know too much about Moon Knight, so I can't really say too much. But what about you, Lo? What are your opinions on this? Um, just like when we first announced Oscar <laughs> Isaac's casting, um, I also am not terribly familiar with Moon Knight. But just... I just trust the MCU and I love Oscar Isaac. So based on that alone, I'm excited. And um, any chance, can you, how do we, that thing keeps popping yeah. up on us, man? What? The don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, you want me to take it down? Yeah, just, uh, we could throw that back on yeah. later. So Gregory Middleton is the cinematographer from Game of Thrones and Watchmen. And based on those, I mean, I, I'm not a big Game of Thrones guy, but from Watchmen alone, that's fantastic news. Um, cinematography is everything especially for these superhero shows it it brings it up another level versus just watching a cw show when you get like oscar level like cinema quality cinematography from an, a talented person like someone like gregory middleton i think that enhances the show and especially because it's just a disney plus series you look at you know the mandalorian which is gorgeous so it's like you gotta like maintain that quality and that that level of excellence for disney plus and i think they're on the right track um, I'm also not terribly familiar with where Budapest is. The only reason I know Budapest is because Black Widow and Hawkeye always talk about it. So <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure the locales will be gorgeous. Um, I'm really a sucker for exotic locale, especially when you like watch spy films like James Bond yeah. or Mission Impossible. It's really cool to see those foreign landscapes. So with that being said. You've got the next one, man. <laughs> Bloodshot 2 and a fourth film in the Has Fallen series is reportedly in development. Who asked for these films? I just Nobody threw this knows. in there because I thought it was funny. Bloodshot bombed. And no offense to Gerard Butler, who I love. Ger don't get me wrong. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Gerard Butler is an excellent actor. But I'm not crazy about this. Olympus has fallen. London has fallen. Angel has fallen. Who else is going to fall down? What is it? Life alert? Uh, help. I can't get up. Um... I, I love you, Gerard Butler, but holy crap. I, I just don't know who's watching these series, but apparently somebody is. Um, we don't got to linger on this too long, but what do you think about all these random sequels coming, right? Personally, yo, Bloodshot 2 shouldn't even have been a concept, first of all, <laughs> especially after watching the first one. God, what a disaster shit show that was. Sorry for my language. And yet again, with another franchise, who the, who the hell asked for another Fallen movie? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, the only one that's been good is the first one. The second one was only decent because, um, what was it? What was his name? Um, Morgan Freeman? No, 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 no. He played um Two Face. Aaron, oh, Eckhart. Yeah, Aaron Eckhart. Aaron Eckhart. He was the only reason I liked the semi liked the second one. And then the third one said, "Nah, fuck Aaron e Eckhart. He's not even in it." And I don't know. I just think the move, the last two are boring, and no one needs this. Gerard Butler is. <laughs> to put it like a better term. Hey, what's up to Amanda? Our resident Canucks, uh, Candid Cinema, also Movies Matrix team member. Gerard Butler has his own cinematic universe. Yes, he does. And it's bizarre. From Katherine Heigl romantic comedies to 300. He's all over the place, but he deserves better. Uh, the dude is awesome. Yo, low key. Low key. But yeah, they got to stop making these films. I don't know why. We, we, we don't need these. These are... 
Awful, absolutely awful. But as we continue with some better news, as he beats, joins the bullet train film with Brad Pitt, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Joey King, and Brian Tyree Henry in David Lynch's movie. Um, this is quite the cast. Personally, I don't like Joey King. There's something about her that annoys the crap out of me. I don't know if it's the Kissing Booth movies or what. But she put a bad that her acting is not good. Um, Brad Pitt, I love. Aaron Taylor Johnson does not get enough love and affection. I need more Aaron Taylor Johnson in my life. Same goes for Zazie Beats. I absolutely adore most of these actors, and I can't wait to watch it. Apparently, it's about a bunch of assassins on a bullet train, hence the name Bullet Train. And it just sounds awesome. But what are your opinions on this, Loretto? Super excited. Um, David Leach did uh, Deadpool 2, as you can see in the in the still. Atomic Blonde. And I think he did... Did he help write Killing Me Softly? I've got no clue. Um, I gotta, I gotta check my facts on that. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe, hit that like button. Welcome to the show. Um, I'm excited. Brad Pitt is excellent. Um, Zazie Beetz was great as as Domino in Deadpool 2. Aaron Taylor Johnson, I didn't even realize, like, he was good as Quicksilver, but I didn't even realize that was him in Kick Ass. So I think you didn't know that. Well, I just, he looked so different as Quicksilver, but then, yeah. and, and he beefed up too. Like he got all chunky and like, oh, so, you know, props to him as an actor for that transformation. Cause he looks so geeky and scrawny in kick-ass. So um, I want to see more of him. I haven't seen enough of him. Um, I'm excited. I think action wise, this is going to be a fun ride. If it's anything like Atomic Blonde, have you seen that one, right? Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of Atomic Blonde personally. I thought it was just a John Wick ripoff. I don't want to continue. You guys know where I'm going with that. But yeah, I didn't really find any good use to it. It's not like they're going to cross her, her and John Mike over. Completely uh, real quick, just jumping back to the um, Has Fallen news. What's up, Andy? Another one of our awesome Movies Matrix members. I don't know. I haven't even seen the first one. That's how interested I was in that series. And what's up to our man Dives, Mr. Crockpot? They're going to make uh, a film titled Dives Has Fallen. <laughs> That's You'll have the live alert, right. buddy. That'll be fantastic. That's All an right. absolute right. right along. But, dude, honestly, I don't even know. Looking at this list right now, I have no idea what this is. But Hulu's released the Happiest Seasons trailer. Can you please explain this one for me? I have not oh, seen anything hey, on this. Right. We jumped one. We jumped one. We did? Oh, God. <laughs> I got you, I man. Oh, so, real God. quick. Before we jump to the Hulu news, um, David Fincher signed a four-year exclusive deal with Netflix. Uh, Mank is coming out very, very soon. I've seen some people, uh, I think IGN, Dive showed me IGN, uh, didn't, wasn't, didn't care for it too much, but I don't care. Like whether it's Tarantino or Christopher Nolan, David Fincher's up there for me where I don't care what the critics are saying. I want to judge it for myself. These guys are like the filmmakers of our generation. These guys are pillars in this generation i think um just look at david fincher's filmography from zodiac to you know social network seven, uh, seven fight club david fincher is incredible i'm excited what do you think about this deal what does this speak for other filmmakers and the state of cinema what what, what does this do for us honestly david fincher's got quite the track record dude he's all over the place between seven and then all of his other films, and now Mank. Mank seems like so much something so much different compared to his other films that it's insane that I said so much two times in a row. That's how crazy it is. Um, I haven't watched anything on this, but I want to see this simply because it's David Fincher. I love David Fincher. And honestly, I love good old Hollywood films. They bring you back and immerse you into those olden days that we never got to live in. So those are always kind of a guilty pleasure for me. But now we can like finally move on to the story that I was talking about originally. <laughs> and that's a Hulu releases Happiest Season trailer, which I have no idea what that is. So, oh wait, Happiest Season. Never mind. I do know what this is. I just didn't know that was the name of this. Yeah, I can't wait to see this actually. This looks like a nice little uh, holiday rom-com. What about you, Lo? Yeah, I feel like every once in a while, we get these pleasant surprises. And like this trailer came out of nowhere. 
but it's adorable. It's um, a female love story, which is when done correctly, it's it's wonderful. And it's Mackenzie Davis and Kristen Stewart. But uh, Mackenzie Davis's family doesn't know that she's gay. And I think that's just a fun way to play on it. Allison Brie is also in it. Aubrey Plaza and Mary Steenberg, um, who people might remember from Step Brothers. And overall, it's just an excellent cast. The, um, you know, it's a little bit sappy from the trailer, but I think with this cast, it's like it's okay to have a little bit of cheese once in a while, especially for a Christmas film. So I'm excited, man. Um, did you get a chance to see the trailer? Yeah, I did. This seems like a very unique movie for Kristen Stewart. Doesn't seem like something she'd want to act in. So I'm really curious to, to see how she works in this. Um, I'm not a big fan of what's her face again? Mackenzie Davis. Mackenzie Davis. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of her. I absolutely hated her in Terminator Dark Fate. I, I thought, thought she was good. But I thought right. she was one of the worst characters in that film. Well, and, that film had a lot of problems. I, but, I didn't have a problem yeah, with her. But I, I, I had a problem with her and the movie, but that's besides the point. I'm just trying to say she hasn't done anything for me simply because all I've seen her in was Terminator Dark Fate. So hopefully this is the movie that brings me onto the McKenna Davis team. Um, so that's fun. But I think we got, what, one more news right before we get into the draft? Um, we got a couple more, actually. Um, real quick, um, I agree with you, Amanda. That I think this is awesome that more and more of these stories are coming to the forefront. I think um, even though people probably didn't see mm. it, I like that New Mutants kind of went in that direction. Spoiler alert, sorry. Um, not a lot of people have seen Portrait on a Lady on Fire, but with how acclaimed that film was and how many film heads love that picture, I think you know we're starting to see more of this, and I think it's great. Um, Andy says he loves lesbians. Right on. Um, John Williams is here for the lesbians, too. I don't know what is happening. I guess um, with that being different. said, we're going to move right along here, folks. John John M. Chu, uh, famous for Crazy Rich Asians and G.I. Joe Retaliation. I didn't know that. Said to direct live action Lilo and Stitch movie for Disney. And don't hear what I'm not saying once again. I agree. I think the remake train is a little bit too much at this point. But I think we also have to realize that Disney, hate it or love it, they're going to keep doing this. And I think this is one that if it's done correctly, if it has heart and if it's well casted for um, Lilo herself and her older sister Nani, I think this could be a surprise hit just like Jungle Book was. Um, I think the technology has come far enough for Stitch to be entertaining. I don't know if you've seen Christopher Robin, but I was re-watching Christopher Robin over the weekend. and it oh, just... I literally tweeted about it yesterday. Yeah, no, I, I sent out a thread. I just wanted to highlight how much that that picture, like, it made me so happy. And I feel like Lilo and Stitch has that kind of character where if the, the locale, of course, with Hawaii is beautiful, if it's shot well, if it's acted well. I liked Crazy Rich Asians. I don't know about John Chu's other films, but um, I think this has potential, man. What do you think? Bro, if it's anything like Sonic, I don't want to see it. <laughs> Bro, I've seen characters with the big eyes transform to live action, and it's haunted my dreams ever since. And I feel like Disney's just setting themselves up for this one. And honestly, at this point, I'd be like, go ahead, do it. No one's going to tell you not to. Please, I want. Can you ask your kid what ha, have they seen Lilo and Stitch? Shiloh, do you like Stitch? Uh, yes. High five. That means yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh kind of shy. Uh, one more thing. Let's see. Live and Stitch, live action potential cash grab. I mean, it's a little bit of a cash grab with all of their remakes, but you know, hate them or love them, some of them are pretty good. Um, which remake did you like, right? I'm not gonna lie, I liked Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast. Those are the two I really only liked, and Jungle Book too. Um, those are pretty fire. I think I like Aladdin more than most people. I'm a sucker for like musicals, and like, that's the most musical one that they've released so far, I guess. Huh. You know what's funny is I'm surprised how well Aladdin did. Um, it looked like Dude. a shit show from the minute it was announced, but yeah, a Bill billion Smith dollars surprised me, man. But a billion dollars? No one expected that. Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ on that. I can't. All right, man. So, yeah, that just wraps about up the breaking and hottest stories from this week. With that being said, if you guys didn't know, us at Movies Matrix, we did an action film movie draft. And we are in the middle of our action movie tournament. All the names you see on the screen drafted teams of six. Um, one night on Saturday, one night on Sunday, had two separate drafts. We couldn't pull from each other's lists, so it 
even the scoreboard a little bit. But if I'm being fair, Night One again had a god tier list. Like Matrix and Terminator Two should have been separated from each other. I'm sorry, but you know it is what it is. I'm salty because I got booted. I didn't even get into the tournament. I was in a play-in round, and Jay Blevins NBA wiped the floor with me. Hey, Twitter. I suggest you guys watch Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Police Story, Desperado. You guys are missing out. Smoking Aces, get on it. It's fun, man. That's true action, guys. Um, Ryan, it looks like you're right in the thick of things. So we're in our Elite Eight, and you're going up against our editor-in-chief, Sean. Um, how do I you know about your matchup? Honestly, I can see this one going either way. The rest, I feel like I can kind of guess who's going to win. But with this one, I feel like it's anyone's game. Todd, ha if I don't remember what he had, I remember he has Terminator 2, and that was about it. But if I remember how I felt, I remember that I'm like, oh, wow, I can actually go against him. You know what I mean? Like, I can see this going anyway. But if I really wanted to guess who's going to win, which I think Logan's going to beat Amanda, I think – I definitely think Larry is going to beat Ryan – for the uh, final eight, that that one is no shocker. I think to me, especially looking at, I think Larry's list is good, much better than Ryan's in my opinion. And who do you think is who's going to win? Do you think Zach's going to win? So real quick, because um, I didn't get a chance to to make it more visible for everybody, but um, we got Zach versus Joe. We got Ryan H versus Larry. And Larry, I thought, had the best team from night one. Um, well, Sean was right there, too. But those are the two best. Uh, you're going up against Sean. Amanda's going up against Logan. And real quick, Logan's got Raiders of the Lost Ark, Baby Driver, Django and Chain, Scott Prildom, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Kick-Ass. Amanda's got Mission Impossible, Inception, Kill Bill, Sucker Punch, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, and Alita Battle Angel. Cop out. I think... Um, Logan has the better list, but I, if Twitter has taught me anything is that Twitter is voting for popular films, films that they like, regardless of the action genre, which is super frustrating. And no offense to Joe's team, but I feel like the popularity of Force Awakens and Spider-Man 2, like just has taken him like running away with these matchups. Um, so I think I agree with you. I think Logan's going to move on to the final four, or at least he should. Um, no offense, Amanda. You're awesome. Um, I just think he has the better list, but you know, Amanda does have a quite the following herself. It could come down to the wire. I think between you and, and Sean, that's probably the matchup of this tournament. Um, you guys actually have like, dude, Brian, this is like the best dude. team ever drafted, bro. Really? Um, you I, think? So I, I gave you a 9.5 on the post show because of Revenge of the Sith, but you know, honestly, I'm stupid. Your team is a 10, bro. I mean, even though I don't consider Star Wars action, like Revenge of the Sith is like, Action I chose the most back. action one, yeah. Well, I, what I did was, after the show, I just threw on the intro because I love the intro, and it's like... Dude, it, dude, it's just pure action for like the first 30 minutes. The minute you hear that war drum, the do do, and yeah. they start descending into Coruscant, it's just so great, man. So I'm sorry, dude. You you got a 10. Um, but at the same time, man, Sean's got Terminator 2, Winter Soldier, Die Hard, Born Identity, and Bad Boys. So it's going to come down to the wire, man. Um... I think Sean might take it, I think. But at the same time, from what I know, Twitter loves Mad Max Fury Road. That's, why I'm, that's why I'm hoping that they come in clutch with Mad Max. Yeah, man. Twitter loves Mission Impossible. You got Ghost Protocol. Twitter loves um, Aliens as well. Yeah. So I think you have a shot, man. I can't even call this. but if I had That's to why I said coin, it's a hard one. Yeah, it is. If I had to flip a coin, I'll probably go Sean. Um, Zach, he's got Infinity War. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan, uh, Return of the King, Gladiator, Deadpool, Air Force One. Uh, Joe's got Spider-Man 2, Last, uh, Indiana Jones and Last Crusade, Star Trek 2009, At World's End, and The Force Awakens. Definitely Joe. You got Joe in this one? I got Joe. I, well, I, I think his films are Zach. just too popular. But, yeah. you know, if Deadpool and Infinity War can save Zach from, you know, from the popularity contest, I think he's got a shot to go to the ship, man. I hope and, so. And with our last, last matchup, we got Ryan H. He's got um, Avengers Endgame, Bloodsport, Casino Royale, Apocalypse Now, The Fugitive, and Sicario. And Larry's got Mission Impossible Fallout, Dark Knight, First Blood, The Raid, Robocop. What a matchup. I think Larry's going to take it. Yeah. But at the same time, you can't count out Endgame. What do you think, man? Honestly, man, I chose Endgame for the very first draft. That didn't get me fucking anywhere. Sorry for my language. So I don't really think it's going to help Ryan too much. I think 
Larry's going to beat him by a, a good amount, at least five five percent or more. I think Larry's going to beat him by. I'm calling it. So if you think Joe is going up against Larry and uh, Logan's going up against either you or Sean, who do you think is going to be the ultimate champion? Damn. Okay. So let's say Joe versus Larry. I think Joe might beat Larry there. Um, I could see that more popular pick. That's also another game I feel like I can see going both of one of two ways, just like me and Sean. And then let's just say I'm fairly confident that Logan's going to win. Um, so let's just go with him first. We'll go to Amanda. But if it's like Logan versus Sean, I think Sean will win. And I, I even think I might, I'll might i beat Logan. So I don't think Logan's going to beat either one of us. And honestly, I think Amanda doesn't really have a strong list. I don't know what the final scores were, but last time I checked, she really wasn't beating Krell or Quell by too much. So, or Krell, yeah, Krell. Oh, I don't know why I say Quell. I was looking at the other name. But yeah, I, she didn't beat Krell by too much. So I don't think she's going to hold too, her her gains too much on the uh, fight against Logan. But yeah, I think three out of the four are relatively, you can kind of guess who's going to go where. I think me versus Sean is going to be the really big one. Amanda said you don't want to face her in the next round. <laughs> Alita no. Army, watch out. Yeah, let, let's hope they don't come in to that second round. And going back a little bit, Lion King was pretty good. Um, I'm sorry, John Williams. I got to disagree with you a little bit. Um, I just felt like Lion King had no heart, in my opinion. I like Donald Glover, but... It was an absolute cash grab. Once they added Beyonce to the cast, it was an absolute cash grab to me. Well, I think they... comparing it to Jungle Book, I wanted them to do something different, and they literally just gave us the cartoon. And it's just... It was... Ah, I don't know. I just didn't care for it. Nah, dude. It, I uh, I didn't like it. it and gave Janice Valyal loved Aladdin. Thank you for joining the show, Janice. That's actually my sister, man. Love you out there. Uh, my mom's here too. Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's awesome. She's wonderful. Um, yeah, man. So you think it'll possibly be you or Sean versus Joe in the ship? Yeah, I don't. I, I'm going to be honest, Amanda, you're, we're really close, but I don't think you're going on, sweetheart. I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be Joe between Zach. I'm sorry to say that, Zach. You're my man. I hope you know that. And then I, dude, Larry's gonna beat Ryan. I think Ryan's got a good first pick, uh, with uh, Infinity War and Casino Royale. Those are his two top hitters. I feel like, but other than that, I feel like Larry's just got more consistent, better action films compiled than him. So I guess we'll see where it goes. You know I what I gotta give Larry goes. credit for, man, because he's he came into the horror draft, and I wasn't familiar with him, but the dude's got some skills, man. He balances what's popular with twitter but also picking really good movies yeah and just for context um he was our horror draft champion he had halloween 1978 silence of the lambs and poltergeist poltergeist as his first three picks so this guy just knows how to pick strong movies and he knows what's popular i think he took fallout in the first round so um yeah man uh, hats off to larry man this guy is a contender yeah i'm sick of people stealing my all my picks dude i'm sick of it <laughs> Bro, literally on the action draft, four people in a row chose every single one of my picks. And I'm surprised I had a, a, a list as good as I did. You know what's funny is I, I've learned my lesson. Uh, thank you, Twitter, for humbling me. I just felt like at some point my heart picks would just win people over. But that is not the case. So I got to find a better balance, man. I think Larry showed us the path to success. Unless you have an army like Amanda does. So... You know, we'll see how this shakes out, man. We haven't even got to the final four officially yet, so. Yeah, I know. We'll definitely find out by next show. We'll discuss it more, all that great stuff. Any final things you want to say, Loretto, before we go? Um, I would say, you know, the action draft has been a great success. If you miss it, it you could find the draft on this channel. We have draft night one, night two. We have two post-game shows. If you missed last week's show, check it out. We have a Christmas draft coming in just a few weeks. Head, keep an eye out for that. That's going to be epic. Who doesn't love great Christmas movies? And go to MoviesMatrix.com. Follow us on Twitter at MoviesMatrix. Follow our podcast, this show, at MoviesMatrixPod. I think that's about it. You got anything going on, Ray? Nah, you did all the plugs already, man. So I'm kind of just useless. I'm just the pretty face now. But <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining us for episode 12 of the podcast podcast. We will see you on the next one. 
Peace. And I didn't end broadcast. I'm stupid. Sorry, guys. Just pretend we 